Thanks for joining today. My name is Naturalist Virginia Delgado Martinez and I work for the East Bay Regional Park District. And my favorite thing to do in the park district is to teach folks about nature. So if you've ever seen one of these leaves anywhere or a place you visited in nature that had these leaves, most likely you're in an East Bay Regional Park. And the best thing about these parks is that they don't belong to me they actually belong to all of us. So I hope you visit one of your parks and one of my favorite things to do in these parks is to look for wildlife. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the wildlife I find at the parks. And there's a lot of animals out there and it's so hard to think of all of them. But first I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, what is your favorite animal? Hmm. That might be a hard one because so many of us have our favorite animals. You might have a pet. Some of us have a dog or a cat. I have a cat. She's one of my favorites. Um, or you might have an animal that you see in the zoo like an elephant or a giraffe or a monkey and that could be your favorite animal. If you have someone next to you, go ahead and ask them what's their favorite animal. Go ahead and ask each other. Hmm. Well, I bet you all came up with a bunch of really neat animals. And there's just so many that scientists, people who study wildlife and biologists and wildlife scientists, they actually had, sometimes they have a hard time kind of painting them all into one group. So they have made different groups of animals. And we're going to talk about one of these groups together. So we are going to talk about Vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone. Hmm, maybe you have seen a vertebrate before. Or maybe you're one yourself. That's right, we're animals too, and we are under this category. If you don't believe me, go ahead and feel one of the bones behind your back. Can you all feel a bone or a couple bones? Yeah. That means that you are a vertebrate, an animal with a backbone. So we are going to talk all about those type of animals, and I'm going to show you some that we found in the park. And when I show you these animals, um, we're going to talk about some of their differences, and we're going to have animal movements to go with them. You all ready? Let's go. So the first type of vertebrate we're going to talk about are mammals. Mammals are amazing because they're like you and I as well. They have fur or hair, just like us. And you guessed it, they drink mom's milk. Mammals like these, like a ground squirrel and a deer and cows, are also warm-blooded. And for our mammal movement, we're going to do these deer ears, just like this. So can everyone go like this? Awesome. These are deer ears. Awesome. All right, let's talk about our next mammal. Reptiles. Very cool. So reptiles are also vertebrates that oftentimes have scales. Some of them can swim like turtles like we see in the middle here. Super cute. This is a western pond turtle. It's one of the only turtles that are native to California. We also have um, a lizard, a blue belly. You can kind of see that little blue belly in there. If you see the blue belly, go point to it. And um, we also have snakes. So for our animal movement for reptiles is this. We're going to slither around like a snake. Let's see you all do it. Slither around like a snake. Awesome! All right, let's talk about our next vertebrate, fish. Nice. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen some fish before. We have some rainbow trout here. And one thing that these fish have in common is that they have scales, and they can breathe underwater with their gills. 
So for our fish movement, we're going to go like this. Can you all move like a fish? Awesome. All right, who's ready for our next one? Birds. Birds are amazing because no matter where you are, most likely you can find a bird nearby, whether it's your neighborhood or at the library or um, just sitting at home looking out the window. We have a cute little hummingbird here. We have uh, some swallows. Awesome. And for our bird movement, we're going to go flap our wings like this. Or we can soar. Let's see everyone flap their wings or soar. Awesome. Wow, you guys, you all are great birds. Nice. So our next one is amphibians. Amphibians are animals that have two lives. They first start their life in the water, usually, and then they go through metamorphosis and they change their bodies completely. Some of these amphibians are frogs, some, some of them are toads, and some of them are newts or salamanders. That little frog on the side is a tree frog. So our uh, movement for amphibians is we're going to jump around like this. Jump, jump. Awesome. Can I see you all jump? Jump, jump, jump. Very cool. All right, let me find my seat. All right, so what's next? So now I'm gonna challenge you to use your animal movements to um, answer some of these questions. So if I show you a picture of an animal, I want you to match it with the animal movement. So if it's a mammal, we're gonna do our deer ears. If it's a reptile, we're going to go like this like a snake. And if it is a fish, we're going to do the gills. If it is a reptile, or an, a, excuse me, an amphibian, we're going to jump, jump, jump around like a frog. Y'all ready? Let's go. So what's this one? That's right, I've seen people doing their deer ears. That's a mammal. Let's keep going. It's actually a cute little fox. We have two different species of fox in the Bay Area. We have a gray fox and we have red fox. We have a, what is this one? That's right, a fish. That is called, that fish is called a delta smelt. So if you live in areas like Pittsburgh or Antioch or anywhere near the Delta, you might find these tiny fish. Fish. All right, how about this one? Very good. That's right, it's a bird. Soaring, red tail hawk. Very cool, good job everyone. What's this one? Hmm. You got it. That is our reptile. So let's do our reptile move. Awesome. This is called a whip tail. And they live out here um, in the chaparral, which is, is a special type of habitat. All right. So what is this one? Hmm, this is a little trickier because it looks like a reptile, but it's actually, you guessed it, it is an amphibian. So it's hop, 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 hop. Very cool. This one, remember, check out its fur. That means it is a mammal. Very good. So now let's celebrate and go ahead and do your favorite animal dance. Woo! really great. So at the moment I want to show you one of my favorite vertebrates of all time. I want to meet I want to have you all meet one of my friends Sydney the snake. So give me one second and I will bring her out. Phew. I'm back everyone and I'm 
with my friend Sydney. Now Sydney is a gopher snake. I'm trying to show you the, her head. There she is. You can kind of tell. She's a little chilly right now, so she's starting to warm up. Sometimes she likes to cuddle and get warm. And that's because she is cold-blooded. Reptiles and other vertebrates like her, they have to warm up using their environment because they can't control their body heat like us humans. They have to cuddle up to a warm rock or bask out on um, a surface to make sure they're getting enough heat. And she's kind of checking you out right now. She is sticking out her tongue. It's not because she doesn't like you or anything. That's how she explores her world. Kind of how she smells. She's wondering if hmm, maybe I have a mouse. Because snakes like Sydney, they actually are not interested in eating humans, of course. They actually prefer mice and ground squirrels. She would love a nice mouse right now. After this, I think I'll, I'll feed her one. And some people, when they see her in nature, they get really frightened. And sometimes they mistake her for another snake that sometimes gets misunderstood. Can you guess what snake that is? Hmm. That's right, a rattlesnake. A rattlesnake um, often, rattlesnakes often get mistaken as gopher snakes. Um, but there are some differences between them. For instance, rattlesnakes, they're not as shiny as Sydney. They are usually dull in color. And also, Sydney here doesn't have a really big, she doesn't really have big cheeks like a rattlesnake. If you look closely, she kind of has a narrow head, right? So rattlesnakes, they have a puffy head. That's where they have their venom. They're the only venomous snake in California. That's right. Also, if you check out Sydney's tail, you may notice, let me see if I can find her tail, there's no rattle. So that's one way you can distinguish or tell the difference between a gopher snake and a rattlesnake by their skin, whether it's shiny, also by their, their face, and also by their tail. Alright, so this is one of my favorite vertebrates, and they live in habitats um, in nature, usually be found in uh, underground, usually in um, holes, or sometimes they'll be under rocks. Um, and sometimes you may find these snakes in your neighborhood. So when you do see one, I usually like to let it be because they're helping us out by controlling all of the mice and the rats and the rodents in our community. So at this moment, we're going to say goodbye to Cindy the snake. And I want to say goodbye to all of you because I had a great time learning about some of our wildlife here at the park. I hope to see you another time and I hope you do go out and explore nature and explore your parks. See you next time. Bye!